Hey, welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined as always in studio by my good friends and partners in radio, Barnabas Piper and Ronald J. Martin. Boys, you are uh, performing a very in- important function in my life this morning in that you're getting me out of a baby shower at work. So uh, if you hear the sounds of women cackling from down the hall, um, that's just people at a baby shower at my office. So disregard it. Uh, we have important radio business to do today. We've got uh, pressing topics, uh, issues in focus today to get into. But uh, before we do that, Piper, tell us about Dwell Bible. Absolutely. So Dwell is our longstanding podcast sponsor partner. Uh, it is an audio Bible app. Uh, if you are somebody who struggles to make time to read your Bible or life is busy or you have small children or you spend an enormous amount of time in the car or you would rather prioritize the gym than reading your Bible, for example, this is a great app for you because um, you can you can kind of plug it into all those other areas of life except small children. They just pretty much interrupt everything. Um if you go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant, you can see their special offer for listeners. It's a 33% discount off their annual subscription. Uh, some of the features that they offer are listening plans. So listen through the Bible in a year, listen through books over a period of time. They offer various different functionalities. So you can you can chop up books of the Bible into segments and listen on repeat for memorization or for study or for meditation reflection. They have offline listening, so if you're somebody who doesn't want to use up all your data or has crappy Wi-Fi, like, say, Ronnie living in Ohio, <laughs> wow. that, uh, that could be a really good wow. feature for you. They have multiple narrators. They have musical backgrounds. They've got a whole, kind of a whole thing set up to make it a, a fully engaged listening experience, not just a straight, flat reading of Scripture and they're constantly upgrading things. So if you subscribe, what you're paying for now will improve over time. So it's not just what's good now will stay that way. It's what's good now will get better. So again, go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant. Check it out. They also offer a free trial. If you're interested in checking it out before you pay any money, you can do that also. Pipe, excellent promo read. That's good work yeah, by that you. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah as always. Very succinct. Thank you. As always. Very succinct. And I always want to say succinct, but it was very succinct. It was succinct. That's like that's like extinct and succinct combined. It's which, really hard. It's I don't know word. what I don't know what the meaning of that is, but it sounds. You know, we're not going to be succinct about boys. We're going to be expansive about this, and it's uh, the John MacArthur Beth Moore flap. Uh, I'm going to go in chronological issue order, so we're going to start with that, uh, and then we're going <laughs> to because this 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 one is the most yeah, out of date. It's the most out of date. So we'll we're going to hit this one first. So um, here's the thing, like. This thing happened, and uh, and people wanted, I'm sure, they they want to hear us rip John MacArthur, um, and and some of that might happen, but uh, I I guess I've got a little bit different take on it, and uh, I I want to hear from Ron on this because Ron is a man of the cloth and he can help me think through this issue. But my take on it is, so both of these people, Beth Moore and John MacArthur. Uh, they're they're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to be ostensibly sharing eternity with them. Uh, also, just to be fair, I I really don't care what John MacArthur says about Beth Moore. I don't think she needs me to defend her, and she's got plenty of money and platform and influence of her own. So I think she will be fine. Um, so I, I guess I'm not sure what it is that people want us to say about this. Um, Ron, what do you make of it in light of the fact that, you know, th- these are brothers and sisters in Christ, and yeah, MacArthur was probably in the wrong, but um, what what level of ripping should we should we be doing here? Yeah, I mean, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, in some ways, like, each of us having, like, certain and particularized opinions on, like, issues like this. Yeah. But yeah, I th- and I think that was kind of the, you know, and Pipe's going to have his own take on this, but... Um, I think the the biggest issue was was like why so unkind, yeah. Johnny? Yeah. Like why so unkind? Like, dude, you can you can have a different kind of you know you can hold a different complementarian position on women preachers, teachers, and all of that. Granted, but why so unkind? Mm-hmm. And why, you know, why why sort of like use your opportunity, um, you know, on a panel to sort of get the crowd kind of worked up in sort of this mocking. Um, you know, kind of spirit against Beth Moore. Again, whatever you believe or whatever whatever you disagree about her position, yeah. why did he have to do it in a way 
that just didn't look good. Yeah. I think for the body of Christ to engage in that kind of like kind of unkindness. I but it's perfectly normal. Like so like somebody could turn around to us and say, Well, don't you guys do some of that on the rant? Yeah. And um but I think um I think there's a way to have some good humored banter without like taking um shots that feel a little more i think personal yeah in yeah. nature and i think that's what he was doing mm -hmm. and um so i think that's why it all kind of gave us a sick to our stomach feeling which is like i don't want to be associated with that at all sure you know ron can you um, can you say just quickly for the listeners and also admittedly for me um what what he said that was so bad yeah so the big <laughs> so the big thing was I, Hey, Pipe is better at explaining these things because my memory starts fading on details. But sure. basically the big line that uh, Johnny Mac, our boy John Mac, used when um, they asked, like, what, you know, what do you do with Beth Moore? It was like, I'm going to – basically it was like word association. Okay. So whoever's moderating it said, I'm going to say a word. Tell me what comes to mind. Oh, man, that And game. basically he's – yeah, this yeah, – always a great game. Yeah. Always ends well, right? And so this dude – Yeah, it's like it's like our old game gut check with Ted <laughs> except it's like, you know, heart, heart oh, check with John Yeah, and, you know, maybe we should play that game just so that we can get into some trouble someday. But <laughs> there like, we go. So, uh, so, so somebody just says <laughs> – so the dude says Beth Moore to John. Johnny Mac and everybody starts laughing and oh no what's gonna happen and then he essentially says the phrase go home <laughs> and um, so, so I mean no, you know not, not to uh, you know hey Johnny I mean don't don't say anything too divisive yeah right tell us right. how you really feel Johnny yeah you know what I mean yeah so I mean in that one I'd rather he didn't I kind of wish he would not tell us how well really we all felt, agree honestly. we all agree with I, that but just, um, but to say go home mm -hmm. he kind of didn't need to say anything else because in those two words he basically summed up all of his thoughts on uh, Elizabeth Moore yeah wow that's funny yeah. so pipe yeah. like Help me understand why why would somebody like John MacArthur be threatened by somebody like Beth Moore? Like, why, why is this a thing even? That's a great question. I mean, she's not pastoring a church, ostensibly. Um, I don't know. She Not not ostensibly. She, she yeah. is not ordained. She's not on staff at a church. The vast majority of the speaking, writing, everything she does is pretty explicitly aimed yeah. at women. Um, she is... She's faithful to, to the mm -hmm. word of God. She loves Jesus. Like there's, there's a lot of things going yeah. for her on the reasons not to hate Beth. Yeah, Moore she list. seems to me to just be um, like the a woman for whom a, a, a lot of people have had a lot of women have had their first like exposure to the gospel and scripture through Beth Moore. So. You know. Yeah, and, and pretty rigorous mm -hmm. Bible study. Like the, the stuff she puts out is not sort of like how do we feel about right. this text? Like she she leads women into the text really yeah. pretty deeply. Um so let me let me give you a personal story to help explain, I think, why MacArthur is is the way he is about this. So when I was in college, I went to a church that was a it's kind of a spin off of, of mm -hmm. MacArthur's church. Um, they claimed they were a church plant of MacArthur, but really it was an elder who left in a huff in the eighties <laughs> and, uh, and planted this one, but basically built the church as a, as like a small version yeah. copy, which also means like a, a hackneyed knockoff. But, um, the, the doctrinal statement of the church was built on essentially defensive statements towards issues that were pertinent in 1984. Mm -hmm. So the, um, you know, we believe in what was it, you know, inerrancy of scripture and young earth, seven day creation and these different kinds of things. And, and one of them was the role of pastor and elder is for men only. So these are like key tenets of sure. this church. That's pretty much where MacArthur comes from is that he, he's fighting, he's still fighting a war. That's not really a war. He's fighting in a way that's not pertinent. And to him, the issue of women in leadership in the church is a primary issue. It's not a secondary issue. It's not a tertiary issue. Like he, his followers will call Beth Moore a false teacher because she is a teacher mm. at all. It could, does not matter mm -hmm. what she says. She can stand up there and read the Sermon yeah. on the Mount. And she's a false teacher because she is reading the mm. Bible to men. And, and that, sort of, that sort of sums up the why there's this just aggression towards her. Now, I don't think that gets to the heart behind it, but that at least it gets to the stance yeah. of it. I don't I I don't understand yeah. the compulsion 
to be combative and to be threatened by somebody who holds a holds a different stance than you do or is um in this case you know to to draw a line that's basically like this is a dividing line between christians you you have to take a side on this more or less it's kind of what what macarthur has said like you you either think beth moore should be doing what Mm -hmm. she's doing uh and therefore you are borderline heretical might be heretical in his mind i'm not Mm -hmm. sure or you don't think she is in which case you're on the righteous side but you're also sort of waging a masculine holy war and i don't know it's the whole thing is ridiculous. It's just, I think the thing that got me most was not, I, I was not at all surprised mm-hmm. by his response, you know, to, to see a, a nervous complimentarian man, uh, be threatened <laughs> is part and parcel. Um, also really fun by the way. What? <laughs> yeah. It's, it would be fun if it wasn't aimed at a particular yeah. person who deserves yeah. better. Uh, it, it was the the tone of go home was very akin to like get in the kitchen or go make babies or like just the the, the patronizing patriarchal BS of mm-hmm. yesteryear and and it just didn't deal with any of the any of the pertinent issues of the gospel or her ministry or her character all of which should have some significance in this conversation. Yeah, that's fascinating. Do you do you think Pipe this is one of those deals where MacArthur's followers are are worse than the actual MacArthur? You know what I mean? Oh, that's all that is that is 100% always yeah. the case. The followers are always worse mm-hmm. than the leader. So if the leader exhibits a, a a failure of judgment, the followers are going to be like the magnification yeah. of that failure. It's with the same it's the same thing with people who love my dad too much you know he is reformed they're insane you know there's this (laughs) there's a there's a scale here uh you know and phil johnson was on stage with Mm -hmm. with john and phil it tends to be the more even more aggressive than macarthur he's the you know he's sort of the the guns blazing guy but yeah i mean i've i tweeted something about this and was more making a statement about how little the critics of beth moore know about beth moore you know, so it wasn't an explicit, hey, guys, back off. It was just kind of like it was basically comparing people who say that she's a false teacher to people who say Harry Potter is satanic. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, neither of y'all have read these mm-hmm. people, so I don't think you have a right to say anything. And the responses I got, it just sort of – it's it's like watching oil rise to the surface <laughs> of water. You're like, oh, you're one of those. Um You know, where people are just like, she's a false teacher because she's a woman who Mm. is teaching. I mean, just straight up saying stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, the followers are absolutely crazier than the leader. But the leader has not done anything to correct the followers in this case either that I'm aware of. How old is John MacArthur? I feel like he's like 100. He's 206. About 206. Yeah, 80 80 going on Methuselah. Interesting. (laughs) Interesting. Big R, like, did this did this register on the radar of of like your church or like is there is there any like real world boots on the ground like pastors have to deal with this stuff or is is this just like purely a Twitter phenomenon? Yeah, I, that's a great question, man. Mm-hmm. I you know so I was going into a uh, no shock a, a week of conferencing. Yeah, wow. And um, no way. Babe. So with all the uh, <clears throat> do do wow, tell. Wow. <laughs> Cool. Well, so I had to do a little EFCA conferencing in uh, in, in beautiful uh, Boulder, Colorado, and then uh, wait a minute. A so- I feel like the EV free is usually in like a suburb of Pittsburgh. You know? How- yeah, no, dude. This one was yeah, or like Algonquin. And they, they up the ante. They up the wow. ante with this one. Man. Okay. Yeah. So are they nice. getting into the nice. pampering game? Are they trying to pamper you guys? No, man. EFCA is not real pampery. I yeah. mean, that, that's not their gig, no. But this was like, there was just a church out there that hosted a an annual worship conference that they do every year. Oh, wow. So I was at that thing. And uh, yeah, it was nice, man. But uh, so, yeah. So in terms of like pastors on Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, um, pot, I guess. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, yeah. I mean, they were all aware. So I had a bunch of fun and funny conversations about that with those dudes. Mm-hmm. But like back home, only a few of the people, some of our leaders that are kind of up on that stuff, were, I mean, it, it was almost non-existent. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I don't think anybody's that concerned. And like everything else, man, this thing is just like, it's all hyped. And then like the next day or two days later or four days later, whenever it is, whatever, whatever like the allowed time of it being all hyped is, 
um, this thing like takes a, a dive bomb and, you know, Jesus is king now. So now we got to talk about that. Right. So um, so I, I think that I think that kind of covered, you know, Beth Moore being, you know, continue to be lambasted on social media. You know? Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with what Ron just said, that the the energy behind it, by the time anybody listens to this, they will probably have forgotten it ever happened, uh, you know, in terms of it being mm-hmm. a story. But it's in, the problem is that it's indicative of the the tone and the and the dividing lines as they exist in between two camps who I think we would look at and go, we should really be able to take benefit from mm-hmm. both of these, the good that they're doing. I mean, MacArthur's preaching over the last, whatever, 50 plus mm-hmm. years is it stands yeah. alone. You know, he's, he's preached through the entire mm-hmm. Bible. He, as, in terms of an expositor, he's just, he's kind of in a league sure. of his own. Uh, but it's very hard to, to kind of rest in that and take it seriously when the fruit of it is something this kind of harsh and divisive. And on Beth Moore's side, it, you know, wherever you fall on the issue of, of women teaching and preaching, the the impact of her ministry and her character and her her leadership of women to know Jesus better is something that we ought to be able to find real enjoyment and pleasure and encouragement in and and then we get this which means like it forces us to either disregard the whole thing and sort of wash our hands of it or to take yeah. a side and i mean i think one side is wrong and one side is right here but or at least one side is wrong and the other side is, is mm-hmm. victimized. Um, and it's just, it's just aggravating because it, it's so counter what anyone in the church ought to. Yeah, and isn't it like weird too, that like, I, I feel like the, um, the impenetrableness of Johnny Mac, like, I, I feel like if somebody, if somebody like 30 years younger than him, that doesn't have the, the, you know, the, 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 the impenetrable walling built around him would have made these comments. I mean, the dude would be having so many issues right now. And I feel like he's just untouchable. And there's something problematic about that in general to where he can just run at the mouth and, you know, he gets people all raw, rawing him to death. But there's no, there's no like, it doesn't cost him anything. And it's just, it kind of just goes back to grumpy, grumpy old guy, you know, Gog, right? Grumpy old guy syndrome. Like, mm-hmm. but there's nobody around him that can say, hey, Johnny. Um, it's a little, it, we're, we're getting a little tired now. And there, there's like, there's, he doesn't seem like he has anybody in his camp that's even able to do that. Or if they did that, he's able to like hear that and listen to that and respond to that well, hmm. you know? Yeah. Any, anything, I think the tone of that camp now, I, this is not, a, this is not speaking directly about him because I think there are sort of layers of protection, so to speak under him, you know, that you can't even get right. through. But yeah, the, the way that that whole thing is set up is that when you when you have you know kind of claimed the corner of truth you know we have cornered the market on this what do you, who do you have to listen to anybody who says anything counter to you is counter to the bible is counter to truth and so you can just sort of dismiss them um and and that seems to be the tone of it that that church that i was at when i was in college i i ended up joining staff there and uh I ran into the same issues with with leadership there where there were things going on decisions being made in the church and and if you expressed doesn't matter how you expressed it, it if you expressed anything counter to that it was you were accused of being divisive you were accused of of being rebellious and in in it, and so you can be trying to work for the good of the church and being accused of being divisive because you're just being counter to the authority and so i think i think that is the tone you claim authority and you claim you know, to corner the market on truth and you don't have to listen. Well, yeah. To and that authority almost becomes like inspired authority. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's yeah, insane. You, you, you've claimed it in the name, yeah. in the name of the Bible. You're like, well, the Bible says, and, and so your interpretation of the Bible becomes a front and center, you know, this is the gospel instead of there being, you know, Christ's gospel, which we are all you know, in submission to. Now, of course, they wouldn't say it that way, but that that's the effect of how they how communication happens and how rejection of correction happens and, and a complete lack of teachability happens. Guys, we just, if we're still doing this podcast in 50 years, and I hope we're not, um, we have to be careful about becoming gogs, man. Grumpy old guys. We just can't. <laughs> we just can't become gogs, man. I think some of us are already there, Big R. I think we are too, yeah. but I'm just saying we can't become that. Yeah. Even though we're already there, we can't become that. Maybe that's a good word. That's deep. 
Um, Pipe, last question on this. Uh, do, do people expect your pops to have, like, opinions on this stuff? Like, when, uh, when a big scandal or a big, like, I don't know, news moment hits involving somebody like John MacArthur and something like this, um, does your dad get inundated with, like, what do, you, what do you think about this kinds of things? And then does he have yeah, to Yeah, because they're, like, walk they're like buds, right? They're buds. Are they buds? Uh, Ish? They are... Budsy? They are... They are peers. Budsy-ishes? Yeah, they, well, I mean, they, they have a lot of respect for one. Well, my dad has a lot of respect for MacArthur. I don't know how MacArthur mm-hmm. feels about my dad. That, I mean, that's not a loaded statement. I genuinely yeah. have no idea. Um, I know my dad has rattled some cages when preaching at, at MacArthur's conferences by calling out things that they hold dear, for example. Um, but uh, I'm sure my dad does, but he's, he's pretty, I mean, he's 73 years old and just, he has his priorities in order, and if it's not a priority, you know, then why the controversy doesn't yeah. matter. You know, he's just – he's not – he is not being – having his priorities dictated to him by yeah. Hubba. Good for him. Does Johnny, does Johnny think your Johnny would be too, in some ways, like theologically liberal in some particular areas? Pipe? Oh, 100%, especially anything involving social justice, race, yeah. um, anything like that. I. You know, and and like my dad has shared a stage with people who John MacArthur would refuse to share a stage totally. with. You know, for example, Beth Moore. Like my dad and Beth Moore are sort of the go-to speakers, preachers at the Passion Conference every year, and and that's and I think well, MacArthur's. I don't think he's ever been asked, but even if he was, I think he would refuse on principle. Um, and so. You know, back back before Driscoll went crazy and then blocked us on Twitter, um, he, my dad, used to share a stage with Driscoll at things, and MacArthur refused to do that. So there's, yeah, I think he would look at my dad and go like, "You're you're soft." Oh, okay. more a or kinder, less. gentler time before we were blocked by Drisky boys. Oh, I know, baby, that's hard. Did that? How did that hit you when we got blocked by Drisky? Was that a big deal? Well, for I mean, you? I was going to ask you the same question, baby. I mean, are you are you coping okay? Are things? Yeah, like, it's tough. I mean, I'm I'm just. How can we pass you through this? I'm not sleeping well, and I'm I'm up a lot just talking to KK about it, just sharing my heart. And uh, she's been really kind. She's been sensitive through it. Um, good, you know, good. it's a this is a dark night of the soul, boys. You know. Well, guys, um, I you know I want to get a Skype call after this. I'm going to send you a couple of books to read. Yeah. And, uh, I got I got to know real good counselor. That's in, good. Uh, That's good. In Jackson, I, I I'm going to recommend. <laughs> oh, so baby, I appreciate it. That's, hang in there. Hang in there. That's good pastoral care by you. And and baby, speaking of your like conference attendance this last week, um, KK was listening to a podcast, some random podcast, and she ran across a guy who like he's beaten you to the whole like hipster church planner writing about rest and margin thing. And oh, uh, she sent me okay. a link to this guy. His name's John Mark Comer. Do you know this guy? I've heard the name. Yeah, he. I think he has a new book out. Yeah, super yeah. Portlandy hipster kind of curated. So he's the he's the Portlandia of reform. He's the Portlandia of like <laughs> pa- pastoral rest margin. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that it's. I'm not sure that he is. Uh, I'm not sure that he's. Reformed. No, he's not with us, pipe. Per se, he's not with us. He's against us, as Johnny Mac would say. <laughs> He should As go Johnny home, Mac would say. which yeah, is what I, he's I'm, saying too, because he's all about rest. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks, Johnny Mac. I, I plan on leisurely. going home. Exactly. That's what my yeah, book's about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, guys, I mean, I can say yeah. this. I mean, Sojourn Network. We're we're in we're in hot water with Johnny because we had Hannah Anderson. As one of our keynotes for the conf. Oh no! Wow. So it's uh, I don't even yeah, know who that is. Dicey. Who's it's Hannah Anderson? Dicey. What's her deal? I mean, she just. Yeah. All you need to know is that she is a woman, a, Ted, and that's where woman. they went wrong. Interesting. Yeah, she's a woman. Interesting. Speaking at a conference full of men and women. Wow. Well, you know what? So I, I never thought I'd see the day, boys. But uh, I know. Yeah. I don't know what to do now. Dude, I don't know if I'm in or is, if I'm out. I mean, yeah. you threaten the sanctity of a conference, and boy, I just don't even know what to do with that. You know. Um, I know. Like Paul, I didn't mean to lay that on you after dealing yeah. with all the risky stuff. I mean, Paul wrote so – he wrote so passionately about conferences in the New Testament and, and how we need that to – that was his main – Yeah. how was his main thrust. How we need to guard the good deposit of conferences, you know, and uh, boy, I, I just – yeah, walk walk in a manner worthy That's of it. conferences. Become fully mature conference That's right. attendees. That's right. It's just it's riddled throughout. What the about epistles. the shortest verse in the Bible, boys? Jesus conferenced. Jesus conferenced. Absolutely, the lanyard, the the, the gift bag. Uh, 
And it was it was clear that he was talking about non conference attendees when he said, "Forgive them, for they know That's not right, what they 100%. do." Um, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It really is just a guys. I think a, what's a happening right now is Crossway the should Testament. be contacting us to do a new Bible. Yeah, to do the a conference new, uh, study Bible. Do study Bible. The ESV conference. Yeah, study the upper Bible. room I mean, was. This is good exegesis right here. This is superb. The upper room was actually a a, a ballroom at a Hilton where the the twelve were gathered to listen to a breakout <laughs> session. Um, oh yeah, that wasn't like a and, private yeah, and, thing. And, that was a conference. Right, right. You had to sign up for that. Yeah, and they were eat, they were eating they were eating sort of rubbery yeah, pot stickers exactly. heated up over a yeah. Bunsen burner. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, there's some like apocrypha book they, written by dudes that tried to get into that thing and they couldn't. They weren't able to get in. It was already sold out. They actually I kicked. Mean, it's all over the Jesus. place. They kicked Judas out just for skipping too many sessions. You know that was the that, issue. Is that yeah. really? Wait a minute. Yeah. Baby, are you trying to tell me that's what really happened? You know, I've I've heard certain scholars, you know, certain scholars are white papering about this right now and it's it's kind of it's moving the needle a little bit. It's caused, it's Whoa. caused me to go back into the text and think about it. Um, I don't know. So, uh, boys, I, I don't know if you heard this little bit of news too. Um, I don't know if this is worthy of the breaking news jingle, but Kanye West dropped is. a new record. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, so Kanye West has a record out. Yeah, Who? he's a he's a singer songwriter. So just kind of a baby, folksy, fill us in. We don't. Yeah, we're clueless. Yeah, he's he's kind of a folksy hipster singer songwriter, and uh, he's got a new record out. It's called Jesus Is King, and uh, this is catnip for reform people, boys. Because anytime you get an opportunity to to read or listen to something and then ascertain like who's a believer and who isn't. Um, just reform catnip. I think the day the record dropped, so um, it was around noon because I was teaching a class and one of my students told me about it. And I actually ended up listening to the record shortly after that. I think before I had even finished listening, um, the first think pieces about Kanye West's new record, Jesus is King, were uh, hitting the airwaves. So uh, reform people were doing what they do best, which is judging someone's salvation. Um, you guys, I know, have opinions on this. You have opinions on the record itself. You have opinions on the marketing aspect. So I, I can't wait to dive into this. I'll, I'll preface it by saying I enjoyed the record. I don't care about the, the rightness or wrongness of it. This is an entertainment vehicle. I enjoyed Kanye's early records. I like College Dropout. I like my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Um, those fall squarely into the realm of entertainment for me. And And I'll just say, too, like... I hope he's a Christian, and you know what? If I'm going to be wrong about something, uh, I'd like to be foolish about being excited that Kanye is a believer. So I hope he is, and uh, I, I guess that's all I feel about it. I haven't lost a lot of sleep over this one. But uh, Big R, as a, as a musician, as a man of the cloth, I know you have a, a, a take on this, so why don't you lay it on us? Dude, yeah, I know, man, I'm with you, T. Everything you said, I, I actually, I, I'm much more simple in my, you know, in my take in terms of... Um, I hope he's a believer too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, we would be, you know, we we would be much less in the faith that we profess if we if we thought anything different. So absolutely, and there's no reason for us to think he isn't. Yeah. Or to judge it from this standpoint, mm -hmm. for sure. I think where I'm a little sensitive is that we've seen this happen in the past. Um, I think where um, the evangelical community, L like seven thousand, yeah, like, times, I mean, by the past, be, I mean like, seven thousand times, where I think even. It's a pretty good sample. The size. evangelical community, i.e., the church, they they get a little too, for some reason. And again, we can have we can have opinions on what the reasons are, but I feel like they just they get a little too excited when a prominent cultural figure professes faith. Yeah. And then what I'm always a little what I'm always a little bit weird about is how they become the marketing machine behind that. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually, and what we've seen most of the time is it eventually goes south on them. Yeah. Because that said artist is going to do something less overtly Christian yeah. in either his art or his personal life. And then where are the Christians at that point, right? They all want to run the other way and or they want to just, you know, pine away about the glory days, about the time that, you know, Bob Dylan had those two Christian albums in 78. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so there's like that aspect of it. But what I don't like is um, there seems to be a bit of a lack of discernment, not in whether Kanye is legitimately saved because we don't have that information we don't know that and i don't think we should you know I, I don't think it's up to us to sit around and, and you know in in you know debate that necessarily yeah but i i think that it's um there is a this is and this is the point i'm trying to get to in terms of sort of the vibe online there is kind of this sense where everybody is sort of like has this people that are really sold out on it 
they have sort of this like in your face, almost like, yeah, see, see what Kanye's done, mm. see world, see what he's done, see you can do something that has artistic merit, you can do something with the most, you know, you know. Does does it though? Does it? No, have hold on, though. I'm not there yet. So you can you can do something okay. that. Well, I'm saying the people that are saying that are saying yes. You can do something. An artist that's at the top of his game, that is, you know, one of the most celebrated artists of the last couple of decades. Like you can do something sold out to Jesus that has artistic merit, that mm-hmm. takes the world by storm, um, that doesn't have to be provocative, that doesn't have to, you know, sell out on morality and all those types of things. And look, we we finally have one of those guys in our camp, and so there's a celebratory nature to it that goes way beyond whether Kanye is actually a believer or not. Yeah. Um, but to me, is is actually contributing to what is going to be probably one of the biggest selling records of the year. Mm-hmm. The, probably the biggest selling thing maybe Kanye has ever done. I don't know. Certainly, the biggest selling thing he's done in some years for sure. Yeah. Um, and again, ignoring the fact, and this is where I get a little ne- negative, and this is where I might take some heat, but I, but you know, hear my tone. Yeah. Is that again? Not like 17 seconds ago, this was a guy who was um, all about mental instability and mega hats, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, so we're like conveniently like letting that like fall. Not aside. not that the latter would inf- would affect evangelicals. No, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I'm just saying, like, for people that are not promoting what you just said pipe but yet they're like super cool now with everything else that kanye is doing from a artistic standpoint and from a you know a standpoint of like you know doctrine and beliefs and all those things so there's just there's a lot of disconnect points for it for me but at the same time ted i can go back like you are and do like dude you like the record do you want to listen to the record mm-hmm. well hey did you like his last record do you mm-hmm. want to listen to his last record mm-hmm. and so i i think that there's a lot of things here that like are are um you know that 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 lack a lot of continuity, I would say. So there, there's my discombobulated hot take. Yeah, I, I, I guess to that I would say, and I, I want to hear Pipe respond to all that stuff. But like, isn't isn't the nature of the gospel to say, and and I guess this is where the crux of the issue lies. If someone's repentance is genuine, don't we don't we at that point like cease to punish them for their previous sins and indiscretions you know what i'm saying it doesn't render what it doesn't render what kanye did in the past it doesn't make it go away in terms of it never happening but i I, i'm i'm encouraged by the fact that in christ's economy that that is kind of what happens you know i'm yeah but let me can i let me speak yeah speak to that i'm totally i'm totally with you big t so here's the problem with that Mm -hmm. the problem is that kanye is not just like a dude from one of our churches (laughs) that came to christ like he's he's a dude with one of the biggest public platforms literally in the world yeah you're right and so again all of this stuff is playing out in public yeah and by the way this the insidiousness of it is all of it is actually making his platform bigger at the same time certainly so so during all of this stuff where he's he is a he is claiming faith he's claiming transformation through the gospel good great at the same time there is a marketing machine behind him that is not bummed out about any of this sure right sure because it's turning Kanye into the most talked about artist literally of the year yeah and it's increasing his public platform so now his faith is being lived out in a way that's going to be really hard for us to I think in some ways ascertain any fruit and again that's not up to us anyway that's up to his pastor and the people that he is localized with Mm -hmm. but at the same time because of his public platform like we are forced to have an opinion about that and like how can we have an accurate opinion on that in a lot of ways given the just the nature of who he is and his platform sure I just think it's really complex to be quite honest yeah you're right pipe what's your take on this Oh man, I got a lot of takes on this. I I largely agree with what Ronnie said. Um, in terms of the where where my discomfiture with this whole yeah. thing lands, it is it's not a it, to me it's not a question of if Kanye is saved. Uh, you know, when somebody professes faith, it is our <laughs> who who are we to say that the Holy sure. Spirit didn't? Who are do we that? to say go home? I, pipe? I, I, yeah, exactly. I'd, well, in this case, I think go home might actually be really good <laughs> advice if offered yeah. well. And here's why. I've seen people compare this to like Paul's conversion on the road to mm-hmm. Damascus, which Dude. A, that's a, that is a 
significant leap of exegetical logic to go from God summoning an apostle to God saving. Also, Damascus was just the name Um, of a conference he was going to in in Boulder. (laughs) So he was actually on I-80 going west on the tollway. Yeah. Which is a real depressing trip, and he probably exactly. wanted to be saved. Um, but the other thing is, like, there's reason to believe from Paul's own words that after he got saved, he disappeared for about three mm-hmm. years and probably went to—I mean, it's not, it's not clear what he did, but there was, a, there was a period of time between him getting saved miraculously and him entering yeah. into the ministry and, and becoming this, this mm-hmm. figurehead, whereas we— First, we want to verify Kanye's salvation, which is not our place to do. His life and the Holy Spirit's work in his life will verify it. We should all pray to, that it's that it's real and be really excited that he is professing faith in Christ. I think that's yeah. wonderful. Uh, but time will tell, and the Holy Spirit will tell if it's real. That's not our job. And we should absolutely not shove him into a position of any authority or any influence. That's mm-hmm. idiocy. If If somebody in our church— moves from a life of very much not Christianity into faith in Christ, the last thing we're going to do is go, you get to preach on Sunday, or you get <laughs> yeah, to lead yeah. a small group. We, there, there's a process of let's help them grow up. Let's help mm-hmm. them learn. Let's, let's, let's move them from, from, from milk to, to meat, mm-hmm. as you know, Scripture talks about it. And it seems like we, we want to jump Kanye to the front of the line in terms of influence, in terms of authority, in terms of power— and I think we are at risk of, by claiming him as our figurehead, completely collapsing what faith he has, because it can't hold the weight of everybody's expectations. Now, to be fair, he also sings about that on his album, where he's like, the Christians are going to be the first ones mm-hmm. to judge me, and we do love to line up when people yeah, fail. Yeah, he's correct on that. I don't yeah. want to be there for—yeah, I don't want to be there for his failures, nor do I want to put him in a position yeah. to fail. Um, I— and none, none of this has anything to do with his album itself, which I don't like at all. I, I think it's it just purely stylistically and, and qualitatively, I think it sucks. But it, it compared to his other albums, it's like, I don't know. We, we can get into that in a minute. I, I am really bothered by the responses to this, both the judgy uh-huh. side and the claiming him side. I think they're both just horse crap mm. and, and are putting him in a position – where he can do no right. He will not please one side or the other. And if you're a new Christian and you constantly feel like you're failing, why would you keep going? Yeah. I mean, aside from miracle of yeah. the Holy Spirit. It gets, I think we are... I don't know how it's to be avoided since he is, as Ron said, just this massively public yeah. figure. But I would hope that he has counsel or the wherewithal or the awareness to step away from the mm-hmm. spotlight and figure out what faith looks like with his family, because that's a whole mess yeah. right there. He married into a crazy yeah. family, like publicly insane, <laughs> publicly overtly sexual, publicly just, I mean, his his father-in-law is transgender. Like, there's, there's a lot going on there. Uh, and then his own faith, and then uh, just to get out of the public yeah. eye. And, and if that happens, I think, I think it, it would it, that strikes me as just an incredibly potentially positive thing for his for the solidity of his faith, which is what and perhaps we want. the most Christian thing to do at this point. Um, but when has anyone ever stepped away from the public eye? I mean, truly, um, I, I can count on one hand probably the times that it's happened, and almost every time it's happened, it's been because of a scandal. Like they were forced out of the public eye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they didn't yeah. step away. They got they driven like, away. It, it's like they, they quote unquote resigned. It was a mutual sure, decision. Sure. And, but he's not. But and he's then not. They, and then they started yeah. a church. But he's not soon. separating. That's the that's the interesting thing though, because as an artist, and I don't actually disagree with this, but but I agree with what Pipe said. But here's the thing: Kanye is not separating his faith from his art and from what he does as the opportunity to be what he is seeing as. Hey. I'm going to make up for lost time. I'm going to be the witness that I never was. I used to, I used to view myself as an artistic God. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, I'm shifting that narrative in my life. And so for him, it wouldn't make any sense to go into hiding for five years um, to sort of regroup and to sort of grow in his faith. 
Because to him, I think what he's looking at is I've been given this opportunity. I used it for self-promotion before. Yeah. And now I want to use this as a way to promote, you know, the Lord. Yeah. And so, like, for him, I, I don't see that he would he could even really see a separation between those two things. Because he feels like, well, this is my moment now yeah. with what God has given me, with how God has created me. And I don't – it would be – I think he would think – that he wasn't serving God well if he just sort of like left it all behind to uh, to go into hiding and um, you know learn how to grow in his faith. So so here's the take that I'm gonna get killed for. This is less gross to me than the than the Tim Tebow narrative um, because everybody involved in that narrative knew exactly what they were doing, um, and there were ostensibly people involved in that narrative who had been Christians for a long long time and decided to make this. 21 year old kid the figurehead of an empire um this feels different to me this feels kind of well it feels new you know i mean it's certainly it's certainly a new take or a new a new persona for kanye also you know given what pipe said which was really really good i mean i I i think the you know the wisest thing would be a big step away but i i guess being in the the christian famous person ghostwriting business a few times like we're we're so eager to build empires around these people who kind of have nothing to say. Um, if if what Kanye is saying is genuine, he is saying more than some of these other people for whom we've built empires have had to say. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense at all? Yeah, yeah. I and I I, I would agree with that. I think the this does if this is contrived, right. it is it is one of the most masterfully done marketing yeah. schemes in the history totally. of ever. Uh, whereas like the Tebow one was not masterfully done. It was like, oh, you're you're just running the generic yeah. playbook of a- attractive worship singing Heisman yeah. quarterback who, who's a Christian kind of thing. And that, yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with mm-hmm. what you just said. I, and I would love, I would love if if Kanye remains in the public eye, like like what Ron just said, you know, sort of, so turning his art from, you know, what it was to a to an explicit effort to honor the Lord and His work, that's going to be really mm-hmm. significant. Um, it's also going to set him up to just yeah. be hammered right and left, both both artistically, which I mean, I think any artist probably gets used to at that. You know, there are there are haters, there are there are yeah. people who love it. But also just the the critics of like like what has happened to Lecrae and to any number of other Christian hip hop artists where people are picking apart their lyrics when they take an unpopular stance on social justice that makes white people uncomfortable they get hammered there's just it, it's just a it's a minefield um, but yeah I would I would love to see this be an authentic thing where he does take what the Lord has done in his life and publicly portray it. I think that would be profound. Um, and and, I, and I still, I still think it'd be better if he backed totally. away a little bit, but maybe because his, maybe because his career and his life is artistry is yeah. performing. That's not a possibility. Yeah. And, I, don't and know. I guess the difference too, between this and Tebow is Kanye West is already at some level, a skilled communicator. You know what I mean? Like his, his career has been yes. communication. Um, it, Tim Tebow has been a communicator for about 15 years and still is Yeah, that's what skilled. I'm saying. He was a skilled football player. I mean, he was a phenomenal football player, but um, <laughs> right. decidedly below average as a communicator. But that's the, that's the very thing that we made him be. And, uh, but he had no conversion story either, though, T. No, you know definitely I mean? not. Like he was, definitely not. Yeah. He was just groomed. I mean, he was groomed for this, yeah. right? Um, from from the, the day I met him, at the senior bowl when he was a senior in college, he was, he was very much being groomed for where he is now. Um, and that's just a, that's a lot to put on a child basically. Um, Can I offer an alternative take? Yeah, please. Um, it's kind, kind of a strange take. Where I think um, that I haven't heard really anybody talk about. It doesn't mean anybody hasn't talked about it. Sure. But, um, I, I think what's so interesting about Kanye and his influence right now in evangelicalism is that weirdly enough, he is on the extreme right side mm-hmm. of evangelicalism, given you know the the the, the uh, 
our you know the historical figure that yeah. now is in charge of our nation mm -hmm. and so i think to say so you mentioned something i think it was you pipe who said well get get ready for kanye to be torn apart well sure like the way lecrae was torn apart sure but lecrae is offering lecrae is offering like a particular kind of view through his art that I think Kanye, given the side of evangelicalism that he seems to be bending in, is going to make it so that, man, there is a the outpouring of support for Kanye, given where he's at in terms of his more right leaning evangelicalism. Man, I, I mean, that is such that is such a, a both bizarre and unique place for him to be in that. Um, yeah, he'll get he'll get. He'll basically get torn apart by the more like artistic end of people that are going to tear his records apart, that don't appreciate his message, that think he's a little too, you know, this way and that way on certain um, areas and issues. But think about the crowd that he is actually going to be leaning into, not even excluding the crowd from our side that are just going to like it. Because, again, that's the, that's all the Twitter feeds we've been reading the last two weeks. But it's a really, really interesting position for him to be in that normally a guy like him that you would think would be a little more on the Lecrae side of things isn't. And, again, he, you know, he makes Lecrae look like an, an indie artist. Dude, anyway, go, so go one sentence for me. What happened to Lecrae? Like, why, why do people tear him apart? I just don't know. Well, Lecrae wasn't Lecrae's no Kanye. I mean, Lecrae yeah. was more of like a Lecrae was more of like a, um, a a niche hip hop artist that does well, but he's certainly not a world conquering. Sure, you know what's well, it's the it's the difference between like I don't know jars of clay and like yeah, Pearl but did Jam Lecrae like you know say in terms of did he say something like offensive to people or what, what? He just got he got burnt out of the reformed community oh, and I he see. got burnt out of yeah you know it. Would, it it's very much, I mean, he spoke out against police uh -huh. brutality. He has spoken out against the current presidential mm -hmm. regime. Just the, the so the, those social justice and, and uh, racial dividing yeah. lines, he has been vocal on and not in a, and he's put more of it into his music too. So the white reformed mm -hmm. camp that so adopted him became very uncomfortable when he started saying mm -hmm. things they didn't exactly. like. And so he, he is, he was. He was kind of pushed to the to the fringes, and he then sort of abandoned um, white evangelicalism as a as a. Well, he abandoned the Christian think that's music any... industry too, which is always problematic right. for these guys. Kanye doesn't have those problems because mm -hmm. he was never in it, right. mm -hmm. and so yeah. yeah, he he's in Kanye's in a weird spot. But I mean, like he. That's going to be interesting for him to navigate because you also have to wonder how much of you. you I have no idea of anything that he said prior. How much of it is real? How much of it is from a place of instability? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he's talked about his own mental mm -hmm. and emotional uh, health issues. How much of it is is a mm -hmm. con? You know, where he's just he is playing for uh, mm -hmm. publicity. Um, how much does he actually believe? How much does he forgot that yeah. he said? There's just a, there's a there's a significant amount of mystery. I mean, I'm right now I'm looking at Twitter and there's a there's a tweet that somebody put up comparing Kanye's um, Kanye to Kirk Franklin. So Kirk Franklin mm -hmm. recently announced that he's boycotting the Dove Awards going forward because they, the last two times he's won an award, 2016 and then this year, he has mentioned the need to pray for victims of police mm -hmm. shootings and, and kind of spoken pretty frankly yeah. about that. And they've when they aired the broadcast, they edited that part out. Um, the first time they did it, he said they, they promised him it wouldn't happen again, and they did it again. So Kirk Franklin is being compared to Kanye, and the tweet just says, you know, Kirk Franklin says, Jesus is king, end police brutality, and white evangelicals are silent. Kanye says, Jesus is king, slavery was a choice. There's one of his sort of crazy statements, and white evangelicals stand up and, appla and applaud. And so That's what I'm driving you know, at right this there. Is, it's that, it's that yeah, side so of this evangelicalism, is, which is massive, man, that he has kind of on it. That's, he's going to have batten for him. Mm-hmm. But but will they though? Because he's still he is still a he's still a black man. He is still gonna say and do things. I mean, if they go back and listen to any of his, maybe they'll just ignore his entire catalog of music up to now. But he, yeah, I, think they I don't can know. Use I, him I, I think what I'm saying they can use him. Well, of yeah, course, dude. Yeah. Sadly, I think yeah. you're right about and that. And I, I don't think they have any any qualms with doing that. I think I think he is. I mean, honestly, if if you can if you can step back, you know, ten or twelve inches. I mean. Kanye is in one of the most unique positions, I mean, culturally, that we've ever seen anybody be in, given yeah. who he is, what he does, and given the election that are coming. I mean, it's it's like it's bonkers, like how this thing, like the turns and twists that this thing can take are just unprecedented almost. Dude, it would have been like if Muhammad Ali had said, like, I, I ride with Richard Nixon. 
you know, Nixon has my <laughs> endorsement. It, it's that crazy. But like, a, as we Nixon discussed, Nixon and Ali, 1970. Yeah, I mean, I, I, th- I think via text we discussed like this is the one way that you can still be rebellious and shocking as a rapper in 2019. Like, you can't do tough guy anymore. You can't do like all the stuff that they did in the late 90s and the early 2000s in rap. Like, he's being the most shocking thing he can be. Um, yeah, and social and be, being progressively social, socially yeah. minded yes. is, is oh, no, no longer dude, shocking. That's, that's, that's the now safest very thing much you can sort be. of on yeah. brand. Um, yeah, yeah, that's not going to shock anybody. So, well, and there's certain political parties that like know they need to be a little more socially minded, and so if they can get a percentage of that with a percentage of this and that, I mean, that's all strat- That turns into strategy, you know. Okay, so bring, bringing this mm-hmm. full circle. There, there's a. Uh, I'm fairly certain it's a Lecrae album from like ten years ago. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna look it up. Um, that he samples a sermon by. Yes, it was. It was a song called "Rebel" by Lecrae, and he samples a sermon by none other than Mark Driscoll, where Driscoll talks about. Um, He's basically what what you just said, Ron. That no, nothing is rebellious anymore. Like you can, he's like you you can ride your motorcycle down the road waving a gun in the air naked, mm-hmm. and it's not rebellious. If you want to be rebellious, read your Bible. If you want to be rebellious, follow Jesus. So I just think it's very funny that Mark Driscoll made that point in a sermon that was then sampled by Lecrae, and we're now talking about Kanye in the yeah, same yeah, light. Yeah, that's interesting. And Driscoll and Lecrae are both like basically done with it at this point. <laughs> that's sad. Uh, it's a sad well, commentary. Uh, yeah, I think I think Lecrae is still on solid footing as that's far good. as I know. He just has distanced himself yeah. from the camps, yeah, that's probably which, good. again, that that's probably the healthiest. Yeah, it's not a bad. Be, yeah, it's hard to have, criticize that. He yeah. can have some artistic Absolutely. license. You can you can make some decisions that are not sort of pressured by people who don't have your best interest or your best spiritual yeah. interest in mind. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good word, man, for sure. Boys, anything else on this? I gotta go in a couple of minutes. I have to become a school teacher again. And but you successfully avoided. Dude, the, I really uh, baby did. I, I I got out of the baby shower. Now I gotta stop being a radio personality. Start being a school. I teacher. think the road to Damascus was a baby shower, dude. Yeah, dude. Dam- Damascus <laughs> was just a big baby shower. Um, yeah, it may have been, dude. I mean, it it really may have been a conference or a baby shower. We gotta just dive deep into the text, Ron. I mean, let's <laughs> let's do some studying and uh, some deep dives. We can put our heads back together on that next week. On the, the deep program. dive study Bible, yeah, by Crossway the, for conference goers. Yeah, yeah, we we do need a conference study Bible though for sure. If it was a conference study Bible, it would have to have the special packaging to allow it to go nicely into a backpack or mm. a satchel or something. It can't be like the, you know, the ESV study Bible, which is the size of a satchel. Dude, our bags. conference is just like bag city. I mean, is everybody just kind of showing their yes. bags off at, at these Pretty things? Much. Just walking around? Well, it's either that, either that or it's a bunch of grown men who look like elementary school kids they're because they've got, like, they've got like a sling, they've got like a paper bag in one hand from the bookstore <laughs> and then they've got like their, their big Jansport uh, backpack boys, on. The question is, does anybody have the bags to show off that we have to show no. off now? We would, we would be no, kings of nobody. these conferences with our bag situation. Correct. And uh, I can't wait to have our bags for uh, Live in Louisville. Oh, dude, we March, should bring them up on stage. April. You know, absolutely. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just we'll gonna wear mine them. or set it on the I'm table. I'm just gonna put my bag yeah. on the stool where I normally sit and just point the microphone at it, and I'm not even gonna appear. Let the know? bag do the talking. Let the baby. bag literally do the talking. Um, boys, we've done a lot of talking over the last hour, and uh, it has been fun. And it has been fun in that we've wandered to and fro throughout these uh, these tense, multi-dimensional issues. Uh, I have enjoyed it, and until next time. The Happy Rant is brought to you by Resonate Recordings. If you go to ResonateRecordings.com, you can see the full range of services they offer. So if you're considering starting a podcast, they are the ones we recommend going with. Again, go to ResonateRecordings.com to see their prices, to connect with them and ask any questions, and to see what they can do to help you launch, edit, master, and improve your podcast. Again, go to ResonateRecordings.com to see what they can do to help you launch and improve your podcast.